You're listening to Rock and Sexy Uncensored, bringing you the cutting edge of the entertainment world weekly, hosted by Amber Lynn. Woohoo! All right, everybody, welcome back to another amazing episode of Rock and Sexy Uncensored, broadcasting live on United Broadcasting Network at UBN geo.com channel one and live streaming on our blog weekly at rock and sexy uncensored.com i'm your host amber lynn and it is my great pleasure to be in the house with you guys tonight and joining me tonight live in the studio is mr joe williamson hey amber hey buddy how you doing doing good thanks you look absolutely stunning as always well thank you joe and so do you not so bad yourself bud well, you're very kind. Glad to have you back in the studio. RNSU works overtime to bring you the very best cutting edge talents from the music and entertainment world. And tonight is no exceptions, folks. Joining us live in the studio. And he has been on our show before, but I'd like to say he was on our old show before, and now he's back back and like us he's even bigger and better than ever he is british rock guitarist he's originally known for the uk goth rock legends the mission uk and we'll talk about that he has also played with many awesome bands and talents including tricky peter murphy spear of destiny theater of hate Mob Research and Al Jorgensen. His name has been really coming up a lot these days. He was on my show before with his solo record release in 2016 titled Volumes and the very successful single tribute cover he did of ABBA's Knowing Me, Knowing You with him frontman Ville Vallo. Uh, it is actually at 4.2 million views currently. Not bragging, but just bragging and counting. And also his album Gemini Night with the Awakenings, Ashton Night. It's out on Cleopatra Records. Mark Gemini Thwaite is back in the house with us tonight. Let's give him a warm welcome. How are you doing, Mark? I'm good, I'm good. How are you? It's good to have you back in the house. Wow, I was just realizing it's been some time, right? Yeah, it's probably been yeah four or five years. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's gone quick. And tons and tons of exciting stuff. I'm so happy to see uh, the success of your single. Thank you. Thank you. And yeah. I can't wait. We're going to be playing that for our listeners and our viewers in just a few. Um but before we get to that, also joining us, she is international latex fetish burlesque star. Now, there's a mouthful, but check this out. And a musician who is fast on the rise, and she has now signed also with Cleopatra Records. And she's already released three records or singles this year. Her debut single, Deadly, and more recently, an epic, and I mean epic fans, cover tribute of Madonna's Erotica in August of 2022. Please welcome to RNSU tonight, the bad Ashley Bad. She's in the house. Hi, girl. Hey, thank How you. How you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, my God. Thank you guys for coming down. I was so excited when I was talking with Mark and on social media, and I saw that he had some new stuff he was working on. So I instantly was like mark you got to come back on the show and he's like sure and and you know what with you've got to have ashley and then i was like check it out bingo right. <laughs> of course we do who wouldn't want to have you in the oh, house oh thank you <laughs> and i know you so guys excited. are now collaborating together and we're going to mm -hmm. talk all about the projects that you guys are working on and we yes. definitely are going to be talking about ashley bad but a little backstory on mark the mission uk 
and your solo music please to start yeah i'm from uh from the uk as you'll see from my accent uh, originally born in birmingham home of ozzy osbourne uh, I actually found out a few You actually kind of have his accent, I, little Ozzy. I found out a few weeks ago that I was born in the same hospital as Ozzy. You're kidding. I had no idea, yes. Yeah, so how bizarre is that? Wow. Um, not at the same time. I hope it doesn't have something to do with the same thing, you know? Both talents, both wild. Well, no, no, no. so, uh, they yeah, might so be putting something in their diapers. <laughs> I grew up in Birmingham in the middle of England and then moved to London uh, in the uh, late 80s and uh, ended up playing for the mission who were called the Mission UK. They uh, were called here. the Mission UK. And here, that is something yeah. I found out in doing research now. And I know yeah. we've talked about the Mission before, but they said in the US, they refer to the Mission as the, the mission, mission UK, UK, which I didn't even know. So we're just trying to be I think there was some politically correct. There was some 70s like funk band, American funk band in, called the Mission. So they kind of technically owned the right to the name. Right. And the rest of the world. How'd you hook up with the Mission UK? Um, funnily enough, they actually advertised in the uh, New Musical Express um, and Melody Maker like music mags in the UK that they wanted a guitar player. And uh, my uh, girlfriend at the time was like, oh, you'd be perfect for that. You should apply for it. And I was like, everybody and their sister's going to apply for that gig. But she kind of taught me into doing it. So I sent um, a demo and I sent a photo. And lo and behold, I actually got a phone call to go and audition, you know. Did you always want to be a guitar player, or is this something that you kind of fell into? Uh, yeah, well, I started playing guitar when I was 15, and I quickly found out that I, I got a guitar because my best mate at school had a guitar, so I was like, oh, I want one. And I was learning alongside him. And then within a year, I just knew it was my calling, and that's what I want to do, and everything was all about, you know, getting somewhere. Well, the new. Mission UK, was they were huge. I mean, they yeah. are even now today. Yeah, but yeah uh, they sold a lot of records worldwide, you know, gold discs, the whole bit. And um, so you got success right yeah. off the top. Like, you came in. And I'd like to say, I mean, obviously, you know, your guitarist is your instrumental part of your making your band happen. There's always an argument. We've had it before, depending on who's on the show. If it's the drummer or the vocalist or is it the guitarist who really makes the band go. But, yeah. And so you played with them for what? Uh, from 1992 uh, on and off. Yeah, we had a couple of uh, disbandings during the period. But on and off for about sort of 17, 18 years. Wow. Until about 10 years ago. Um, and then you left to do your solo stuff, right, in 2016? Because that's, I think, when we hooked up, when I met you. You had the new solo record out. Uh, you were yeah. promoting. Did a, well, actually, actually after, Peter, uh, after the mission, I ended up playing guitar for Peter Murphy, the singer from another British band called Bauhaus. Right. So I played uh, for Peter Murphy for his solo career. Uh, so I played on some of his records and did a lot of touring. And then it was during a down, a down time in 2015 that I started going through a lot of my demos and sort of getting the itch to, oh, you know, I've never, I've played on, you know, I, I toured with Gary Newman, the electronic icon in 2013. So I've done all these things. I worked with Al Jurgensen, recorded with him, but I'd never put anything and He throws out. it out there like it's really nothing. You know, it's <laughs> like, oh, I did this and then I did that. But it's like, these are all big Steps, right. huge but I'd never, steps I'd, with I'd, I'd never put, iconic musicians. I'd never put something out as my, you know, just for myself. So I thought I'd be quite nice to have like a, a record that's me. And um, so I did a bunch of demos, but I've never been a singer. I didn't want to do a, uh, you know, a Steve Vai or whatever and do like a sort of, a, yeah, sort of self indulgent guitarist solo album with loads of widdly guitars. Uh, I'll suddenly come up with the idea, oh, I'll just get my friends to sing on the album. Right. And I'll just use my music. I'll I guess it always worked for Steve Vai, though, right? Oh, yeah, he did great. <laughs> oh, no, he was great. I just didn't want to I be... Know, I didn't want to put out that kind of a self-indulgent record, as in you know, musically self-indulgent. So I was like, right. oh, I'll just work with all my friends that are singers, and Vile Valo was one of them, and Wayne Hussey from The Mission, and uh, a bunch of other guys, Ricky Warwick from uh, Thin Lizzy. They all kind of guested on the album. And, uh, right, I, yeah. I remembered that. And yeah. then, okay, so in 2016, you come out with your debut album, the solo album, right? Yeah, volumes. Yeah. Volumes. I put it out as my initials, MGT, because all the fans would just call me MGT. It's a 
Vila, oh, they did. Vila, oh, yeah. Vila said, "Oh, just call it, call yourself MGT." You know. Okay. Uh, so that's what I ended up doing. And then you picked out a cover. You said, "Let's do a cover song on the yeah. album." Is there is that something to that where where you do like an album and then every and I notice a lot of people do it and they pick like a, a cover they want to do of something else that's completely different than the original. I mean, when I when I came up with the idea of doing like a dark, heavy, gothic version of Knowing Me, Knowing You, the ABBA song, I, I still didn't know I was going to be putting out an album. So that demo was kind of gestating. It was one of the things that I was kind of working on and sitting on. And uh, it wasn't until V-Lay sang on it that, I, and then the, the record labels heard it. It was like, oh yeah, this is actually probably potentially a big hit, you know. So uh, oh, it yeah. was kind of a, an act. A, a, happy accident, pleasant surprise that it, it just ended up on the album and ended up being like the main single. And, and this is out on Cleopatra Records, No, right? that, that, that first album actually with the ABBA cover, that was released on a German label called SPV Records. Uh -huh. They got a lot of bands like Motorhead and so on were on SPV in Europe. And Motorhead, then my second- A lot of bands like Motorhead. Yeah, yeah. And my <laughs> second, al <laughs> second album was um, on Cleopatra. Right. Yeah, that one came out um, in 2018. So was it a surprise success story with the um, with the with the cover how it hit like that yeah, because just, it I like mean, literally took off right from the beginning and you'll see in a minute because we're gonna we're gonna take a look at the uh, at the video we have the music video and we want to we want to see this it is it's pretty amazing yeah um, the director of, I always get his name wrong his name's Vila as well Vili Juri Yuri Kakalia. He uh, did a fantastic job. And um, how'd you pick this song? What was um, the, behind it? I, uh, knowing Me, Knowing You was always my favorite ABBA song. And I was a big ABBA fan. And in England, it, we all grew up in ABBA. Like, they were just like a, you know, just a major presence on pop radio. And uh, I'd always heard that song much darker and heavier in my head. And so that's what I did. I just recorded it. And I just needed somebody to sing on it. And uh, Vila stepped up. I sent him the demo. And he was like, oh, yeah, yeah, he wanted to have a go at it. Guys, let's take a look at this. Yeah, so this is um, this is the video that we shot, if you want to. Uh, MGT, Vili Vallo, Knowing Me, Knowing You. We're going to go ahead and pull that down. Psych! We're not going to show you the video. <laughs> no, just kidding. We actually have um, a better version of the video that we want you guys to, to see. So uh, give it just a second, and uh, we'll come back with that in just a moment. Do you need that, Tony? No, I got it. Okay, cool. He'll pull it up. So just let me know when you're ready yeah. with that. Yeah. Yeah. And you're right. It is a much better one. There's a lot of emotion to the video that you, there the is. music video yeah. that you guys did. It yeah. really. And we actually, uh, if you've ever seen the original ABBA video, it was filmed. Oh, of course I have. And, it, I, and I know. It was yeah. filmed in the wintertime and it would show these certain sequences of, you know, the girl singers and the guys in the band like singing from the side and we wanted to reference like the fact that it was a winter video and some of echoes oh, you did. we okay. kind of reference echoes of their video and our video like a little homage you know? see i didn't i didn't see any of that what i actually saw as a matter of fact let's take a look and then we'll talk about it afterwards okay because i don't want to spoil it Where the story is, the 
Great piece. Thank you. And uh, funnily enough, Vile, uh, for the first time, Vile Velo has just released, an, I think, his first solo album, ne Neon Noir, which uh, just came out last week. It was like in the so he took a break for a while. He did, yeah. So anybody who's wondering about Vile, he's back, and he's yes. got a brand new solo album new out. Album, and he's touring the States in, I think, two or three months. Wow. Yeah. We'd love to have him on the show, Please. by the way. Please. That would be great. His album yeah. went number five on the charts immediately. Yeah, the iTunes charts last week, it was like at number five, yeah. That's so awesome. Worldwide. Shout out, Vile. And the work you did together was just amazing. There's, It's mm -hmm. such an emotional piece, what yeah. you did with that. Musically, for me, I was so surprised because I love ABBA. And, of course, no 
ABBA and in the era when it was popularized, we all grew up with it. Mm -hmm. But this is about today and yeah. how the, I've watched this song through you musically evolve mm. and bring it to now, which is mm. amazing because I don't think if ABBA released that song today in its original form, it would have made it as popular because we've moved on. I suppose, yeah. Right? A good song is a good song. Oh, but a yeah. good song is a good song. And when you take it and you remake it because it mm. doesn't compete with the original, it it changes it in a way that brings something to it that for me really was like, wow, you know. Yeah, I felt like there was a darkness in the original version. But they, you know, ABBA always presented themselves as a pop band and it was always fairly yes. sort of... Very pop. A pop mix, and I just heard it in my head as being much darker and more melancholy and gothic and heavier, and that's the version that you just heard. Where can they get it? Where can they get your music right now, Mark? Where um, can they go? Well, it was about, uh, the album's available on CD, um, SPV Records, but the most easiest way, of course, is go on Am Apple Music, download it there, uh, or um, Amazon, any, any of the streaming outlets. You can listen to it on Spotify. Uh, and we got this, uh, some cool remixes as well. Uh, so yeah, just look up MGT, uh, knowing me, knowing you, and you'll find it on Spotify. And he's got some other other uh, another record out, right? The um, Gemini Night. Yeah. Yeah, I followed up the Volumes album with Gemini Night that came out in 2018. Uh, that was a collaboration with uh, South African singer Ashton Knight from The Awakening. Ashton had sung on a couple of tracks on the uh, first album, and we just kind of kept writing. And before we knew it, we had a whole album's worth. It also featured um, Killing Jokes drummer, Big Paul Ferguson on drums for most of the album. And uh, so it was the same singer throughout. I kind of wanted to do a whole project, kind of in the vein of what you just heard, you know, sort of dark, you know, emotional gothic rock. And that's kind of the whole Gemini Night album is kind of in that vein. Awesome. Yeah. Really, really awesome. And now he's got a new gig going on, and we are so lucky to be brought in as a part of this. This incredible beauty next to him is Ashley Bad. After spending years in the NYC fetishistic goth underground, she relocated to L.A. to embark on a solo career of her own, and boom, signed with Cleopatra Records. Well, she has been very, very busy, guys. She has already released three singles this year, her debut single, Deadly, and an amazing tribute cover of Madonna's Erotica, which we're going to be checking out in a few minutes. But right now, let's talk to this beautiful doll we have in the house with us, Ashley. Hello. How are you doing, I'm girl? I'm doing great. Welcome to the show. Thanks. I'm so happy to be here. I know. Yeah. Hi, Joe. Hey. Come hey. on in. <laughs> so, and I know Joe doesn't know this, and a lot of people don't even know what a fetishistic underground movement is. And I mentioned to you guys just briefly, you know, I was in New York back in the day in the mm -hmm. late, you know, mid to late 80s. They had a place called the, the, the Health Hour Club. It was the Hellfire Club. And they had like Play-Dohs and they had all these really, really cool, this cool club scene. And I had not yet been to London, England. So I didn't get a taste of that yet. Mm -hmm. But when I went in and I was with Jamie Gillis and he was a very dark kind of character. And they, um, we used to go to the Hellfire Club. Yeah. And it was different because it wasn't a latex fetish type of environment. It mm -hmm. was more of a leather sex club type of thing. But I do believe that they have kind of evolved into that or from that into what we see now. But you have like uh, Dita Von Teese and things like that. So tell us what what it is. Explain to us. So um, I come from, um, you know, performing and modeling. And when I was 18, I even dabbled in domination and being a dominatrix for a little while. So I come from like the underground scene, which is mostly a collective of like, you know, different types of fetish parties, occasionally hanging out at New York City dungeons. like Right. Pandora's I was going to ask, boxes. did you ever work in a dungeon? Because I, I have a girlfriend who owns one. Porcelain yeah. does. <laughs> 
I never really worked in a dungeon. I was kind of like my friends were stealing clients from dungeons, uh-huh. and we would like we'd rent spaces in dungeons. But I was sort of like that They're girl really was fun. kind of ushered in, like clinging to my girlfriends who were like really like pro doms for years, and so we ended up being a part of the dungeon scene. But I wasn't like a working mistress inside those dungeons. If okay. that makes sense, okay. yeah. Okay, because it's different yeah. for you. It's 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 got like a different a completely different platform which is in the burlesque yeah right? okay. yeah because so I'm, I'm a just... performer so I took um like you know from doing doming when I was very young I started to uh acquire you know a huge wardrobe and I also started I to work that. Things. <laughs> I started I I had some connections from going out to fetish parties with designers latex designers so through that connection I started to work for a latex designer oh you're kidding yeah you and... want to mention them again give them a shout out sure uh latex nemesis that was the first designer that i worked for and she taught me how to make latex clothing she also was a dom and it was a super kinky environment it was awesome and learning how to make latex clothing i started to perform burlesque because i made a lot of my own costumes right yeah so it all and the costumes that you wear in your videos which um the fans are going to see in just a few minutes are just breathtaking thank you i mean beautiful really they look like art pieces the stuff that you're wearing thank you yeah to this day i still work with like a bunch of different really amazing latex designers i'm so lucky they're awesome. I mean, now mainstream music, everyone wears latex. It's almost like they're making it, um, they're normalizing fetish and kink because you see Katy Perry and, of course, Madonna, Lady Gaga, you name it. Like, well, every Madonna's pop been star. bringing kink into since the beginning. Yeah, from, yeah. since way back. And yeah. I think that Madonna, also, who comes from New York, has been, she's been breaking barriers, Mm -hmm. you know, in the music industry for a long time. I mean, nobody, and I even had this conversation with Monty Pittman, her guitarist, who was on the show just a couple of weeks ago. And I said, if anybody else would have came prancing out in a white tutu saying, like a virgin, it probably wouldn't have worked or sold the way it did. But because it was Madonna and she has that, something it just went like a fire yeah so that is a lot of what and I immediately when Mark mentioned you and I looked at your stuff I was like oh yeah of course I want to have her on the show because your talent is there you know just the your work and everything it's so beautiful the way your costumings are but it's also your performance and it's just amazing um, so you came, you started doing like the, the fetish and performing mm-hmm. in those, t- in that type of environment. Did you want to be a musician or was it a natural so, thing? I had an interest in it when I was in college. So like 19, 20, I had an interest in it, but I didn't really get um, that deep into it until about 2012, 2013. And I had um, a really bad knee injury where I couldn't walk for weeks, weeks and weeks, months. Um, So I was kind of like bound to my bed in one room. And my ex was like, uh, he was... um, uh, he was like a he was a musician, but more so a recording engineer. And he was like, you know what? Why don't you you know take your time and kind of learn how to um, to program music? So he gave me some basic tools, and I started in 2013 um, programming a lot of my own beats and a lot of my own music. Yeah, and then it was just a natural progression. Progression. Yeah. And then, how did you guys hook up? And, and what's happening? How did you? Yeah, it's, tell uh, us about your work it's together. It's kind of a connection to that because mm-hmm. because of the pandemic, you know, we had all this time on our hands, and I heard these old demos of Ashley's. I was like, oh, we should um, you know, collaborate. We should, like, yeah, work on yeah. These. We, and we, we and it's a very, it's a very big industry. It's a very small town. We, it's funny because we're just sitting here before the show having these conversations and we're like, wow, I know that person and I played for somebody who, and it's a small town and we do try to kind of collaborate with each other and hook up. and. Yeah, I mean, Ashley and I have known each other since, you know, for since I think 2009, right? Mm-hmm. We know 2009, each other through, yeah. Through mutual friends. And uh, so we'd, t- we'd see each other when I was passing through New York on tour 
and then we started dating at the end of uh, 2019 and I, I just got you heard it here <laughs> hot off the presses <laughs> And I'd just gotten the gig to be guitarist for Lords of Acid, the, right. Bel the Belgian um, band, uh, on their US tour that was going to happen in March 2022. And we all know what happened in March 2022. Right, uh, the, pandemic the pandemic shut but, everybody's ass but down. I talk, yeah. I talked to Ashley into coming out from New York. I was like, why don't you come and spend a month in LA, you know, get a feel for it. You know, I was kind of enticing And you're coming out. out to do your music, right? She came mm -hmm. out to you're tour. coming out, you're yeah, coming she came out. She was going to... I, Were I, you on Cleopatra yet, or is this in no. how you obtained the gig? No, she was going to be the uh, the burlesque, burlesque performer dancer. on the Lords of Acid. Yeah. So you said, hey, I because he hooked come him up and yeah. said, I've got this great girl, yeah, and this okay. is going to be cool. And I saw it come out to LA. So she came out with just one suitcase and her stage clothes, and, <laughs> and she spent a month in LA, and then we're in... That's how we roll! We're yeah. In, we're in tour rehearsals. As long as then, I got my makeup bag. <laughs> we were in tour rehearsals with the Lords of Acid, and literally the show, the first show was the next day in LA, and we were told the whole tour's cancelled because of the pandemic and the way all the venues got shut down. And so she was then stranded in, in LA, LA, being told not to go back to New York. Cause not some, a bad yeah. gig, <laughs> especially when you look like this. I mean, I'm sure LA was happy to have you, right? Yeah. Her, mom, her mom and dad were saying, stay there with Mark, you know, because yeah. New York City was really was bad. Everyone was dropping like flies yeah. in New York with the pandemic, yeah. it was bad. Oh, it was really bad. Yeah. God bless yeah. all my friends in New York. It's been a great suffering. And I'm so glad that we are back. I went to Vegas, they shut us down there, and mm -hmm. then I wound up coming back a year and a half later i'm back in la myself and so is the show and so happy to have you guys back and so you got a contract with uh cleopatra yes and you have not let any grass grow under your feet girl you are <laughs> like i'm going to work this is my opportunity yeah. and god bless you for it because you. you know you got it you got to work you got to make hay and you I'm certainly pushing. have, right? Yeah. So your debut single was Deadly, mm -hmm. the first one you put out with Cleopatra, and you've done it all in a very short period of time. Like, you're rising fast. Thanks. And yeah. you put out Deadly, and then there was one other one. Uh, the, the Gun. gun. The Gun, yeah. right? Is that yes. the one that Joe looked up? On IMDb, yes. On IMDb, okay. And so that one looked it up, and, um, uh, and then what was it that made you stop and say, I want to do erotica, erotica. Madonna. Uh, well, I really wanted to cover Madonna for a very long time because if it without Madonna, I all these doors would be closed, to be honest. Right. Especially for a girl that's in kink and any sort of sexual scene. If there's anyone that made it possible, it was Madonna. So I always wanted to cover Madonna and I've been a fan. I think huge we all fan. want to be Madonna. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> a lot of men yeah, too, right? Exactly. A lot of men want to be Madonna. Yeah. <laughs> you see them all over the place. Yeah. <laughs> and uh Mark and I had been talking about it for a while because you had done uh like a Madonna remix. Yeah, it was kind of inspired by I did a because I DJ now and again and I do these rem remixes that were like my versions of songs and usually what it would be is take something say like um, it was actually Justify My Love and I added a bunch of guitars to it mm -hmm. right? and then I would spin it when I would DJ and um, so we talked with Ash was like oh I'd like to do something like what you did with Justify My Love mm -hmm. and um, I was like I'm not sure if I wanted to sort of redo that one but why don't we do another one? And we kind of agreed on erotica, erotica as being yeah. perhaps one we could play with. So you were pre-inspired. She yeah. was one of your inspirations yeah. musically, yeah. anyway. And so, like a mentor or like an icon that we that we look up to, you said, "I'm going to do this." Yeah. And so this has recently released in August of 2022. Mm -hmm. Right. How's it going with it? Have you heard from Madonna? It's going great. No, <laughs> I would love to hear from Madonna. Right. I know. I just had Monty <laughs> Pittman on the show uh, a couple of weeks ago, and I have said to Monty two times on the show, I said, Monty, you know, because we all say Madonna's done everything. Yeah. What hasn't Madonna done? She has evolved and gone this way, that way. She went from being a virgin to being frozen to being <laughs> right to being so many things there isn't anything this woman hasn't done and i said monty i'll tell you what she hasn't done she hasn't done a metal record yeah. you yeah. need to do madonna metal yeah. and he's like 
yeah, wow, that might not be a bad idea. And I'm like, you got to tell her. Tell her about Madonna Metal. But <laughs> we're doing Ashley Bad tonight, guys. And she has done an amazing tribute cover to you. And I'm going to let her set it up for you guys. And then we're going to check it out. Hi guys, this is Ashley Bad, and you're watching and listening to my new single, Erotica. Oh. To put you in the trance Erotica Romance Erotica I'd like to put you in the trance erotica guys this song is lengthy there is a long version and there is actually a shorter version but mm -hmm. i just wanted to be able yeah. to give her an opportunity to talk about it and say wow the 
it's beautiful. Thank it really you. is great. And I'm congratulations. Thanks so much. So where are your fans going to hook up and grab this and support your music efforts and um, buy your stuff? Uh, buy so her stuff, they guys. Can buy it directly from my website, ashleybad.com. It's on Apple Music, Amazon. Apple Music is iTunes. Uh, it's on every streaming platform right now. So if you just type in Ashley Bad, you'll be able to find me. And her costuming and her look is just so awesome. And I just told her, I said, you know, you look a bit like Betty Page in the face, the look, kind of Betty Page without going there with the look because so many people put it on like it's a costume and this is the real girl can i ask you to do us a favor sure would you stand up and just show our viewers just your awesomeness <laughs> and your awesome <laughs> outfit i want to see the dress Wearing she has on PBC this is how she rolled into the dress. studio tonight guys there she is isn't she pretty beautiful um, lovely Right. By um, Enzes in New York. So there's like a, a really cute store where Enzes hand makes, she makes, hand makes all these outfits. And you can get like 40s, 50s, 60s reproduction dresses. And uh, so she picked this one out for me, which is like, you should do a I line. You should do your own line of <laughs> like actually bad, badass, whatever, because, you know, it's so popularized fetish now, fetish yeah. fashion. So what's in the future for you? What do you, what's what's next for you guys so an album should be in the works right. soon right she's Mark? also um you got some performances and she also does some djing as yeah well. so i've been doing a lot of djing and i'm still performing for a lot of um like fetish balls in the u.s so you're doing fetish balls yeah. and the biggest one of all is called the oh god what is the name of it it's in san francisco i've been to it myself it's called the, are you thinking of a, a torture garden it's something like that Okay. It's, a, it's a fetish ball. It's the biggest one that happens uh, in a, California. There's a few of them that have popped up over the years. Right. Yeah. Uh, last year she did Rubber Ball. She Rubber did, Ball USA. We both, we both did Dallas Fetish Ball. I was DJing yep. there and she was performing. Dallas and Fetish you, Ball. And you are bookable as a DJ, yes. right? So yeah. you will do DJ for clubs, venues, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Yep, and I keep it sexy. And you keep yeah. it sexy with your fetish stuff. I've even been doing a specialist like Black Cherry. Oh, I yeah. Like, currently, I've been doing a gothic, fetish-tinged lesbian event. That's what I've been doing recently. Really? Yeah. Oh, God, I'm so glad to see you. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, so it's only women. It's super sexy. I'm so excited to be a part How of it. How is that? Because they're so um, just happy to be able to enjoy, you know, amongst their own community. Yeah. Right, and to be supported um, in the LGBTQ. Exactly, right? and it's like it's well, a you safe got space. you got to do one for the boys yeah. too, not <laughs> just for the lesbians. But what about the boys? Uh, so do you ever try and slip him <laughs> in that fair, one? Not fair, not fair. Discrimination. <laughs> I mean, You're, uh, right, I'm gonna hold. It's all inclusive. We're gonna have to hold you to that. You're gonna have to set up a ball for like just all gay men and yeah. trans and yes. and cross dressers. Well, well, this right? one's still it's all inclusive, so it is a safe space for like trans. See, and guys, I'm taking people. care of you. You know just, that. We just want to make sure up. that the the men that do come that they know that this is, this is a safe space for women. You know, so it is all inclusive, but we want to make sure the right people are there that are gonna be respectful to the ladies. Yeah. Know? Oh. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, I can see you separating that. But yeah, there is now, now in the world, and thank God for it because, you know, there was a time when it wasn't a safe space for anybody yeah. who was, you know, exactly. And yeah. now we can we can literally do this and enjoy it and not have to worry about it being taken the wrong way or the person because it can be, you know, it can really. Um, anyway, so we have a new album that we're going to be working on, mm -hmm. and that's what's next. Yep, and there's a Black Cherry tomorrow night. There is. There's are a Black we, Cherry. When are we going to put together tomorrow. a tour and send her out? Oh. As I was just telling her, that's going to be tough to do because when I was on the road, you know, doing my Gentleman's Club touring, I did have a couple of latex shows that I did. 
and we would literally have to get to the venue an hour before our usual start time when I was doing latex at night because I would have to like powder my whole body down <laughs> and lay on this rubber tarp and yeah. my assistant would have to like sit there because in the cat suit is the worst one of all. Oh yeah. You have to like literally sit and like do this to get it on and then if you do it wrong and you tear it it's gone it's done <laughs> you yeah. can't fix it right i you can fix it um luckily i know how to do that from my days working for different latex oh so designers. they are fixable they though, are fixable if you tear something right down the front yeah yeah you can put a patch of rubber over it it's all put together with glue and it sits overnight for 24 hours i wish and i would have known that yeah but if you See, have a performance you that night, then forget about it. Your night is done. Oh, man. I'd, I'd love bring, to see you on tour. Yeah. Right? I always bring backup garments when I'm performing because you never know. Something's going to pop open. <laughs> right? It's not always a bad thing. <laughs> yeah. I, and do you do any work in adult at all anymore or adult genre? Or do you keep it just in the fetish realm? Uh, well, fetish still, um, even if there's no nudity, it's still categorized as adult. It is yeah. because it denotes yeah. sexuality. Yeah. yeah. So I do still dabble in fetish. I still do fetish modeling. Are you doing any of the um, the burlesque, like Dita Von Teese or any of this type of stuff where you'll do performances yeah. in burlesque? Yeah. Okay. So every year I'm usually doing, um, like I said, a bunch of different fetish events. I always have booked... Um, yeah, so and I. Excited. You're going to be performing in Vegas. In oh, June. that's right. Yep, yeah, I'm going, going to be doing a Vegas too. show. So I'll be yeah. doing. I do, you know, fetish burlesque or latex burlesque. So it's quite similar. Where at the end of the performance, you're naked, and you can be fully naked depending on. In Vegas, who, you can be fully. Yeah, naked yeah. On as stage. long as they yeah. have like a cabaret and it doesn't license. Have, oh, so you are going to be doing it in a gentleman's club. It's actually just a, a regular club. It's like a gothic What's fetish it called? club. Uh, Artifice. Artifice. Which is a, Artifice. A club mm -hmm. in, in Las Vegas, yeah. Really? Yeah. I've yeah. never heard of it, and I lived there for a year and a half. That's why I'm wondering. Cause I Maybe it had a different name. You know, so I don't know how long it's Artifice. Been and yeah. when is, yeah. do you have your dates there where fans can... Is that I think it was the 30th, 30th of, June, of June. But, uh, it's still... Yeah, we're still Still, still a ways talking. away, yeah. yeah. But coming up, but you know what you guys can do is you can hook up with her on her website. I mean, not hook up, okay. <laughs> Dream on, back. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> you can join her website, go to her website, and follow all her stuff because she's got a lot of stuff going on, and she's got a new album that she's working on now, and um, yeah. So. What are you going to do to top erotica and your thing with Madonna? Oh, it's hard. It's going to be hard to top that. <laughs> it's, it's been out since Madonna. August. Yeah. It's been out since August. And so you've you've had a chance for the fans to come back on it and stuff like that. What have they said? What's how they receive it? So far, everyone loves it. Everyone is so excited about it because it's a darker version. And it's very difficult to be darker and more sexual than the original you know, because it has that um, that underground, dark wave, gothic tinge to it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I know that because I worked in the adult industry for years, and I've also worked in the mainstream industry, and I know what the difference is. And for me, it's much easier for me to just be sexual mm -hmm. than to try to be sexuality and not be sexual it it's more there's more work involved like in the old playboy channel we were talking about it with michelle bauer last week is to be on and be like simulating your sexuality mm -hmm. um but anyway i absolutely wish you the best of luck we're so happy to meet you thank and have you. you on the show and mark yeah. thank you for hooking us up and introducing her so before we go let's hear where are your fans going to follow you guys so they can stay in touch with your music. Um, yeah, I guess our website's, you know, markgeminithwaite.com. Uh, I think it's on the screen. Uh, oh, you, obviously, you can look us up on Spotify, Ashley, is, is ashleybad.com. That's right. Um, That's Miss right. Ashley Bad on Instagram and TikTok and everywhere else. And pretty much you can find her just by looking her up. And we didn't get time to take fan calls 